morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is Baron Bryant, pastor of Hillcastle United Methodist Church, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of This Is The Day. For the last couple of weeks, we've been kind of interviewing some of our staff and, and checking in with them and during this crazy time, and it's good to be able to share. I have one more staff to member to interview, but I wanted to just bring you a special message today, uh, you know, just to let you know what I believe God has laid on my heart. So welcome, welcome, welcome to This Is The Day. Our scripture lesson for today comes from the book of Matthew chapter 5, where Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And I want to talk for a few minutes about the aspects of Christ's likeness. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, I ask that you just be with us now and bless our time together. Bless these who are tuning in on today. We ask, gracious God, that you would open our hearts and our minds to hear what your word speaks to us. Through Christ our Lord, we ask and pray. Amen. You know, Jesus was speaking to his disciples who were just ordinary people. Uh, he wasn't talking to intellectual, philosophical, or even religious people. He was talking to everyday, ordinary people who had ordinary problems. People who he called and, and changed and challenged to Christ's likeness. You know, Christ's likeness resides in persons who know Jesus and are becoming like him. Doesn't mean that they don't have problems. Doesn't mean that they don't have concerns. They do. But they're becoming like him. As Christians, we are described by two powerful metaphors, salt and light. Think about that, salt and light. Usually during this time of year when it's uh, snow on the ground, whatnot, you know, uh, salt is put down to kind of melt that snow. And of course, we know if we're in a room where it's dark, uh, we can only see when we turn on light, whether it's a flashlight or light inside the room. Well, salt was scarce and a valuable commodity in Jesus's day. It was an irreplaceable item, desperately needed. Salt was so powerful that a little goes a long way. You know, as Christians, our witness should be like salt that Jesus spoke of. It should be powerful. It should be unique. The fact that Christians are light is, is, is related in other scriptures. You know, Jesus said that he is the light of the world. He is the source of spiritual light. He alone gives us light. Although salt and light were considered valuable in biblical times, and to some degree still considered valuable in our time, it is possible to lose its savor, and it is possible to hide light to prevent it from fulfilling its purpose. Salt can lose its saltiness, and of course the light can be hidden um, from fulfilling its purposes. The point is that we as Christians can lose our flavor, our influence on others. And it is possible for us to hide our spiritual illumination and therefore our usefulness. You know, if we say that we are Christians and we're acting no better than the people in the world, then yes, we can lose our flavor, our influence on others, or we can hide our spiritual illumination and our usefulness, which is what we don't want to do. How does this happen, though? It happens when we allow sin into our lives or some wrong attitude to control us. That's why it's so important to pray every day, uh, Lord, to forgive us of our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, to help us on our journey. Now, uh, we do uh, this by violating the Beatitudes and being unwilling to let Christ develop us and have his way in our lives. When we resist 
Christ having his way in our lives. Boy, I tell you, we're on a slippery slope, man, because Christ is there to help us on the journey. But we resist and we want to do it our way and, and, and we want it our way. And it has to be done the way we want it done. Then, you know, the word of God and, and things of God will have no effect on our lives. You know, we want our lives to matter for the Lord. And so it means yielding our way, our selfish will to God and God's way and allowing Christ and the Holy Spirit to do a work within us. Or we do it by compromising Christ, thus manifesting little distinctiveness to the world around us. These are awful dangers. When we compromise our faith, that, that's a danger. The blessed life is to be a blessing. But where do we begin? We begin with ourselves, first and foremost, ourselves. Like the song says, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my mother, not my sister, not my father, but it's me. We start with ourselves. We apply Jesus' teachings to our own lives first. Before we can tell others about Christ, we need to apply it to our lives first. Is he changing your habits? Uh, do you, for example, have any driving habits that are not Christ-like? And we all do. Do you observe the laws of the stop sign and the speed limit? Or do you just blow past them to where you want to go? We start with ourselves. You know, the other day a person cut me off in traffic, man. I tell you, I was like, oh, you know, and and and, and I wanted to like, I was in the car by myself. I wanted to just like, what What are you thinking, you idiot? But, but I caught myself, and I just said, help them, Jesus. Help them. Because I don't know what was happening in that car and with that driver. I don't know what they were going through. But it, in other words, it starts with me. It begins with ourselves. We apply the teachings of Jesus to our own life first. Uh, and then... It can branch out, you know, same way with our shopping habit. Do we push ahead of other shoppers? Are we demanding of the clerk? Do we do we want our way? Do it have to be our way? What about our work habits? Uh, do do we work with a grumbling spirit? Oh, I just hate this job. You know, I this job is just getting on my nerves. Or are we excited about our work? It's hard to be excited about a job that you don't like then you ask God to help you to be a stepping stone to somewhere else, help that job to be a stepping stone to project you somewhere else. And let me say this, you are at the exact place where God wants you to be right now. And once you have learned the lessons, then the Lord will move you on. I learned that a long time ago. You know, a lot of times we are all in uncomfortable places, but Sometimes God has us placed there for a reason. And once we learn the lessons, we then move on. We first must start with ourselves. We then continue at home. Does your life give light to everyone in the house? Do you practice Christ likeness in your home? Or are you just one big cloud? It starts in the home. We hold the key. Light illuminates life. It's light. It lights the way and gives direction. One who is in Christ walks in the light and offers hope and joy to all they encounter. That's our purpose. We want to offer hope and joy to everyone we encounter. And when we walk by the word of God, we walk by the light of of God's truth, and we give much needed light to others. God will help us, friends. As we continue to trust him, God will be there with us. He'll guide us. He'll strengthen us and help us on this journey. And guess what? Every day is not going to be a picnic. Every day is not going to be a sunny and birds shining. Nope. Some days are going to be raining. Some days is going to be snowing. Some days is going to be ice 
out there, but we continue to move, trusting God, that God is going to help us on this journey, that God will give us the strength that we need. And he will help us because we are the salt of the earth and we are the light of the world. And so we are to let our light shine before others so they may see and know that it is God who's doing that and not our, ourselves. Amen. Friends, I hope this has been a good word for somebody today. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you. We ask, Lord, that you would just continue to help us to be the light. Help us, Lord, to love your people. Guide us and grant us your strength. As we go forward this day, Lord, we don't know what the day holds, but we know, gracious God, if we stay connected to you, we can make it through all things. So be with us this day. Guide us, bless us, and make us a blessing. Through Christ the Lord, we ask and pray. Amen. Hey, dear friends, it's been nice being with you today. I pray that you have a wonderful week. And remember that you are the light. God loves you and he cares about you. And I love you too. And I hope that you have a wonderful week and that God will be with you and that he will bless you. Until next time, this is Pastor Vern saying you be blessed and be a blessing and stay straight, stay safe and stay strong. God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you.